Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers. It is a great pleasure for me to be in your company tonight just to bring you this magazine. As we all know that, well, the news broadcasting has been turned to magazine and we are discussing on a weekly basis a number of issues as far as national and international news is concerned. So today I have with me uh, one of our charismatic reporters, Muda Shiro, and uh, we are going to discuss about various issues, like I said. Uh, Muda Shiro, good evening. Good evening. It's good to have you. Yeah, well, it's a pleasure to have you on board tonight. Well, I think uh, we are going to go through a number of things as far as national items are concerned. Mm -hmm. Well, without any other protocol, I mean, uh, we are going to touch the reality uh, knowing that in our country today, just a few days back, yeah. well, His Excellency Dr. Yaiboni just tried to reshuffle the government. Definitely. What would like, yeah. like to know that a number of uh, positions have been changed. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Well, what is your appreciation of, as far as uh, this reshuffling of uh, Dr. Yaiboni's government is concerned? Uh, first of all, I. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me and having me on the program this uh, evening. Uh, the uh, first thing I'd like to say is that uh, that's reshufflement. We have seen uh, some aspects which are really uh, unusual. Unusual because uh, the Ministry of Defense, which was held by uh, Isifu Kogindro, uh, General Isifu Kogindro, is now held by the head of state himself, uh, which is uh, something totally unusual in this part of the world. And well, currently, is there, the head of state, is there something behind that uh, appointment? Oh, actually, uh, Isifu Kogindro is now responsible for uh, the Ministry of Presidential Affairs. And uh, the head of state himself is in charge of uh, defense. And uh, some analysts look at the situation. They say it is due to the uh, situation, the political context, and the political instability in the region currently. We have the case of Mali. We have the case of Guinea-Bissau, where we have the, the coup we have seen. And some analysts say uh, maybe the head of state is uh, feeling something, is um, uh, occurring maybe in the army and to make sure he has the control over it, he wants uh, the ministry to report directly to himself. That's why he took the, that uh, position, Ministry of Defense. So now there's no more Ministry of Defense because the head of state is responsible for the whole uh, defense department. What I mean, I wonder whether it is not a very burden, I mean a heavy burden for His Excellency, you know, well, leading yeah, uh, the country so. and also the, the Ministry of Defense. Yeah, is this so. not too much for him because he's currently the chairman of AU, African Union? Definitely so, definitely so. Even before that, uh, we, well, we thought but uh, the head of state will try to vest some power upon his prime minister uh, uh, because he has been uh, elected uh, chairperson of the African uh, Union. But instead of that, he is now taking on uh, another ministry, which is a huge ministry indeed. The Ministry of Defense, there's so much to do in that ministry that um, taking that as his responsibility in addition to his uh, position or his uh, role as the head of state of Benin, uh, head of the, the state and as the chairperson of the African Union, uh, it, it is, I, I think that is my personal opinion that it is too much for, for him. Because uh, every, every day now we have seen Benin Airport is, be, is becoming a, a kind of hub. Every day we have new uh, visitors to the uh, president's office uh, in his role in the framework of the African Union. Every day we, we, we have visitors coming to, to meet him for uh, issues relating to the African uh, continent as a whole. So, but now, having the Ministry of Defense again, uh, it may seem uh, a, a little bit more than what he, he, he can uh, control and manage in, a, in an effective way and in an eff efficient way, uh, indeed. All right. Well, I think apart from the Ministry of Defense, well, the Minister of Finance has been changed. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. I think Sadija too is uh, no more uh, Minister, Minister of uh, uh, Finance. Yeah. But um, I, I wonder this change. But it's may, it, it seems that well, the minister, former minister, made a mistake yeah. in running uh, this department. Is that yeah. true? 
what is officially said, the reason officially, uh, the official reason behind the reshufflement affecting her is that uh, she said to have uh, entered into a contract with the BOA, Bank of Africa, to indict the government or the, the whole nation as a whole, definitely, because um, the government had to pay, I think, something like 17 billion, uh, 12 billion uh, France CFA to um, AIC, which is the cotton sector uh, stakeholders, and the government decided to pay that for uh, the import, import or importation of, of inputs for the uh, cotton season, the next cotton season. And uh, that decision, as the government said, was not to, uh, was to be covered by the local budget, I mean the, the proper budget of the government itself, but not to go and get a data a loan from a bank like BOA, a private uh, a commercial bank, which is what the ministry did. And uh, the, that is the official reason. Has the decision reason. not been taken uh, during yeah, the definitely. meeting of the... Uh, the ministers yes, and the definitely. ministers cabinet, but and yeah, why this is the, a mistake again? No, since actually, they... it's, uh, the mistake is the decision of the government, as is said, is to pay the 12 billion francs to AIC. But the Council of Ministers, in the Council of Ministers, the decision has not been made uh, as to where will that money come from. So the minister, Adija Tumatis, is said to have decided unilaterally uh, to loan from BO, uh, uh, BOA, Bank of Africa. So uh, instead of um, reporting to the head of state, referring to the head of state to have information whether she can do that or not, they said uh, in dating the, the whole government, the nation, cannot be done by a sole person. This is what they, uh, she's uh, uh, attacked for. Because the, the right process would have been for her to introduce the project, for the, the loan project, to uh, the, the, the session of the Council of Ministers, and the ministers will decide together whether they will go ahead with that or not. But she decided unilaterally to enter into that contract to, to pay the money. And so that is the reason, the official reason for her departure. But uh, as I was saying, that the official reason, some people see that uh, there's another reason, the reason behind, which is... Uh, the, well, the politically teachers. speaking, we yeah, cannot detect know. because there are many things going on the ground. Yeah, definitely and, uh, so. Yeah, definitely we so. cannot go beyond a certain limit. Yeah, uh, but uh, coming to the debt which is supposed to be paid to AIC, yeah, well, yeah. this, I mean, uh, is one one of the reasons that today we are going through a crisis within cotton sector, yeah, isn't it? So. Yeah, definitely. Yes, so. what about uh, this crisis today? Oh, actually, the issue relating to AIC is, is not actually a date uh, to, to be paid by the government to AIC, but it is um, part of a contract between AIC and the government. AIC is to purchase inputs for uh, and pesticides. Well, definitely, for the next, uh, because they've been entrusted uh, so by the government to do so. To do so. And, uh, so well, yeah, it's uh, a kind of future date, but not mm, uh, a date mm, as such. But what about but the, now, the, the cotton crisis, crisis the, now? Yeah, yes. the, the, the crisis is that uh, currently there is a uh, uh, danger or risk that the next season uh, might not have uh, the necessary pesticide. Uh, last year, the Minister of uh, Agriculture had to go to Burkina Faso to meet his uh, counterpart in Burkina Faso to have them uh, and borrow some bottles of the, the pesticide, which is TIA, uh, not TIA, but another one, because uh, the farmers, the producers complained about TIA. They said it's a bad quality pro uh, product, and they said uh, they couldn't afford or continue using that product. Uh, and uh, this year, particularly for the next season, uh, the problem is there's no, the importers have not yet um, imported the, the, the products, which is necessary for uh, the, the, the season the and season. for the farmers. Mm -hmm. That is one, one reason. The other reason is the uh, farmers are unhappy. They're unhappy simply because uh, what they have produced uh, when they sell it, they think the measurement uh, instrument is not uh, reliable because uh, some farmers, for example, expect to have produced four tons of cotton. And finally, when they sell it, where they go and they weigh the, the, the cotton, they say it is three tons. 
So there's a difference, and they say they're, they're not happy with those instruments. That's the second reason. The third reason is uh, there are many other stakeholders with have, uh, who have been put aside in the process this year, particularly, uh, notably the researchers, uh, uh, there's uh, the director of the Cotton uh, cotton and Fiber Research Center, who complained to Mr. Uh, Musibau, uh, I, I think his name Musibau something, uh, and he complained that the researchers have not been taken into on board as they used to do in the past. In the past, their recommendations are taken into consideration in the process uh, to improve the yield of the uh, of the cotton. But uh, this year, unfortunately, they have not been involved as as by the past, as they used to do in the past. And this led uh, some stakeholders to uh, say before the media that uh, the researchers have not been effective in their role. But those, uh, the, the, the researchers organized a press conference last week to mention all those issues and talked about that. When we talk of AIC, what we need to mention is that AIC, which is the Intercotton uh, Association, they're made up, made up of the producers, they have the dinners, and the importers, uh, input importers. And what the farmers say is that they complain that dinners and the uh, input importers associate themselves and to, uh, you know, uh, get them marginalized because they are businessmen, they are business people, they're discussing between them, they made ev all the decisions. So as, the f as producers and part and parcel of that association, their uh, views, their viewpoints, their contributions are not taken into consideration. Oh, quite so sure is there is a turmoil about, in yeah. the cotton sector, and I believe that, well, the government has to handle that issue very seriously mm -hmm. and, you know, Absolutely. try to bring about uh, the various stakeholders involved in the cotton, uh, I mean, cotton sector. Mm -hmm. Well, shifting from that item, I would like now to address uh, the item in connection with uh, Nigeria, mm -hmm. Benin border police station, yeah. where well, it seems that uh, there is a kind of turmoil in uh, at that border. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. Uh, currently, the pro, uh, government is anticipating the construction or the reconstruction of the border, and especially the construction of checkpoints, which will be uh, along the, the border. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it is a, a huge project, and uh, the development partners uh, have their contribution, which uh, amounts to um, 15 billion CFA francs. But what happens is the project is to, is to start to be launched on April the 17th, but up to now there's a family called Family Yamajako, Yamajako in, at the border at the right spot where the uh, project is to be construct, constructed. And before, 64 families used to live there. The government has uh, compensated for them to leave the area for the project to, to take place. And uh, the 63 other families have left except the uh, Yamajako family. Uh, there's one family called Yamajako. They're still there. They're complaining that uh, out of the 300 million francs that the government has paid to compensate for those who are there, they have not received any penny. Uh, so uh, they, they say they cannot move out of that place until they get something. But the wow. Minister of uh, Interior, um, Benoit de Glas was there uh, this week to tell them that, and give them ultimatum to set the, uh, next Monday, tomorrow actually, yeah. if they don't leave the place, the bulldozers will come and just destroy all the houses, uh, in, including yes, the Yes, so I think uh, uh, they, they the have tenants. to be abide by the law, and that's yeah. uh, the Yamajakos family should want to understand that well. This is for the public interest. Yeah. And I believe that we still have a number of items to touch, but unfortunately due to time constraint, but seeing what is happening in the sub-region, yeah. especially the coup d'etat in Guinea-Bissau yeah. and yeah. Uh, Mali currently, the interim president. Oh, well, roughly, roughly speaking, can you say just a few words about these? Uh, <clears throat> well, what I can say is that uh, the, uh, the turmoil, instability in the region now is becoming a, a crucial issue. And Definitely. I think that uh, African Union, together with uh, uh, ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States and uh, uh, international community, must look at that issue uh, with um, much more attention because it requires a lot of attention from the uh, international community. Because uh, in Mali, it was recent, in Guinea-Bissau as well, the, the elections in Guinea-Bissau 
particularly was scheduled for April 29th. I, I don't, I, it is not understandable that uh, a few weeks before election, uh, some military will take, you know, conduct a coup and take the power. So I think that issue of instability in the region must be uh, looked with a lot of attention and um, it should not continue, I think. And that's Definitely. why we must welcome the, the position of the international community, ECOWAS, African Union, Ban Ki-moon, all those who condemn the coup, I think uh, this is well, what... Well, I the think the international mission, community yeah. is just uh, set and ready just to do something tangible, especially the chairman of the ECOWAS, uh, I mean, uh, the head of state of Cote d'Ivoire, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, striving just with his uh, peers well, to find the right solution to the crisis in the sub-region, especially in Mali with the Tuareg issue and uh, um, Guinea-Bissau where there was a coup d'etat. Well, dear viewers, unfortunately, well, time is limited and uh, we have just to stop here for today. But next week, we are going to come about with a very tangible and current topics that we are going to address. Thanks so much for your attention. Thanks, Mudashiro, for coming. And we keep in touch for next week for Sound Magazine. Have a nice, a good night rest, definitely. Bye-bye.